All right, what's going on, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen? The ACMJS Gamer here. Today we're here to talk about Star Wars Outlaws. Um, I'm not here for any BS. I did not enjoy the game. Uh, to me, K has no purpose in the galaxy. The game gives me no purpose to care about her story, and the way that that happens doesn't really make sense, especially towards the end. So with that being said, this is going to be a full spoiler review. Um, so let me start off by saying that I am typically a Ubisoft fanboy, I have been for a while, um, but more so recently, I have not been afraid to ever criticize Ubisoft for their scummy business practices. As a matter of fact, I covered a lot of that controversy on this very channel about the game. Uh, not to mention, I did the same for all of the Assassin's Creed games. I haven't really liked an Assassin's Creed game since... Um, since Origins. I, uh, Mirage could have been better. Um, Mirage, in my opinion, is better than Odyssey and Valhalla. And as a matter of fact, Mirage is the last Ubisoft title that I played, and it did a better job of presenting the open world and activities than this game did. Uh, so with that being said, let's get into it. Um, uh, this game had a... had I had an issue every time I was in a session. Um, anything you could think of associated with Ubisoft, I had that typical issue. Um, specifically, I had missing textures. Uh, there's like an eagle vision that Nyx can have that wouldn't pop up when I pressed the button. Um, I fell through the world. I got stuck in turbo lifts. Um, you know, that those sort of glitches, and that there's even more. Um, the open world, there, there's nothing to write home about. The Witcher 3, which is almost a decade years old now, uh, did a better job of this than most of the recent AC games, you know, Valhalla and Odyssey. Uh, any side location, as you'll see on the map here in a second, um, any of the side locations or activities are basically either syndicate outposts or it's a treasure location. That's it. That's all there is to it. Um, you do have some side contracts, but they actually use some of the same treasure locations, which felt lazy. You're reusing the same locations in an open world game. Come on now. Um, Assassin's Creed Mirage had more of a device, more of a divisive or variety of activities that you can do. Um, like I said, I always go back to The Witcher 3, man. Um, and they've even done, I think, perhaps a better job with Cyberpunk and the variety of activities. Um, so when Ubisoft says that they have an open world game and they have a lot of activities, it's like, yeah, you have a few speeder chases... I think I only encountered one on my playthrough, on my entire playthrough. Um, they do give you the opportunity to play Sabak, and that's about it. But I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about like open world, not in the city activities. If you look at The Witcher, you have different things you can do with the monster nests or discovering new locations. And like I said, when you discover new locations in this game, it's just another treasure spot. Or it's, it's an outpost for a syndicate, which is also just another treasure spot. Um, uh, they do have some side content regarding contracts, but again, uh, the syndicates tend to rotate around having K steal, plant, or deliver another faction's goods, um, either in land, in the open world, or in space. The entire game really feels like a fetch quest when you're doing these things because it's go here, get this, go there, do that. Um, which is really, really interesting. Uh, I'm very confused with the stealth aspect of this game because it is entirely not needed. The way that they did stealth is okay, but it was like a crutch when it came to certain missions. Now basically, when you're in a syndicate faction area, and you're in a restricted area, if you get caught, you're immediately sent back, and your reputation goes down. If this is a Star Wars game, you're supposed to play as a smuggler, you're supposed to play how you want to play, why is it that when I get caught, I can't fight it out, and yet, um, if I do get caught, I just get kicked out and have to redo the whole thing. That's kind of stupid to me. Um, now, what's even worse is that there are main missions where you are forced to do, you're basically forced to remain undetected um, in the beginning, and it doesn't matter because the base is alerted or wherever you're at gets alerted or the alarm goes off anyways outside of case control. So it's like, really, you're going to have a sneak through an entire level just to, at the end of the say, say, screw it and just go for it? 
why can't we do that from the beginning? It, it doesn't make any sense. Um, Uh, the whole idea of Kay using her fists to stealthily take out clones is hysterical. Um, the least they could have done was given her a baton or something to, like, knock them out. There is an upgrade that you get that's like a taser. Um, and you do have a stun on your gun that you can use, but it has to recharge, which, in my opinion, is kind of stupid. Um, but yeah, you have a little taser to take out other enemies, and it's like, okay, that's quiet, that doesn't make any sense. Um... So that's the stealth, moving on to the parkour. I didn't really like it, it was just kind of terrible. Um, you never really know what you could and couldn't grab onto unless it was painted yellow. Uh, for example, there were some rocks that you couldn't climb, there were some that you could, there wasn't really indication as to which, which you could unless you just tried. Um, it felt more like a chore to try to navigate um, than really having fun. But what's surprising is that somehow the team forgot how to properly program parkour in this game better than Odyssey or Vala, Valhalla or Mirage. It's like this comes from an Assassin's Creed dev team. You would think they would know how to get parkour right. Um, overall, what you have been seeing this entire time here on Tatooine, uh, the game does a good job of making you feel like you're in a Star Wars world. Ubisoft definitely nails the aesthetic of the details in this sci-fi universe that is Star Wars. Like I said before, the issue is when you get in out into the further open world because it's bland and the same locations are used over and over again. Um, despite doing a lot of faction quests um, and spending plenty of time on each planet, the main story really did feel short compared to more modern games. Um, at the end, Kay should have known where her place was in the galaxy and we just don't get that type of payoff. I believe it's because Ubisoft doesn't know where she'll end up either, and we'll talk more about um, why that might be. Uh, the game definitely could have been better if players were allowed to create their own character and fill in their own backstory. Um, they should have been able to take on the role of Gunslinger. Um, I don't understand why we can't get contracts for killing people. I guess that's the difference between a smuggler and a bounty hunter, and Disney doesn't like that. Um, but another issue that I have is that you only get one blaster. You can modify it to different modes, but you only get one blaster. I would have preferred a Far Cry style where we get a blaster and a rifle, and maybe you have to find cartridges for the rifle, and um, maybe you have to use the blaster as a secondary until you find more cartridges. That would have been a cool mechanic in my eyes. Um, now, the, the main thing is with me that Kay is uninteresting as a character. I do not care about her at all. The story gives me no reason to care about her or her story. And the thing is that we have ND5, who's a battle command, a BX commando droid um, from the Clone Wars who wears a trench coat and he's got a hole in his chest. Um, ND5 is actually asked about where he got the coat from and the hole in his chest, and the coat is never addressed. It's mentioned once, and we never find out where he got, got it. Now here's where we get into some spoiler-heavy territory. The hole in his chest is referred to at the end by Jalen's brother. Um, ND was sent by Slero to hunt down members of Slero's family after he accused them of being traitors to the Empire. In return, Slero became the ISB director. That's why I said there are spoilers. Um, Slero, the head of Zarek Besh, basically created a syndicate as the head of the ISB to infiltrate the Underworld. Um, like I said, ND5 is probably the most interesting character. Um, he is a part of the crew. He's given a few lines of dialogue, and that's about it. Um, throughout the entire game, ND5 only joins you on a handful of missions, and other than that, you're kind of stuck with Nyx as a companion. This is another issue I have, where you can't swap out Nyx for any other members of the crew uh, it might have been an interesting game mechanic if they did it Mass Effect style, where it, it, in a way this game does feel like Mass Effect 2, where you're going from planet to planet and you're recruiting different people for a crew to do a heist, essentially it's the same thing. But the difference is, on the solo missions, it's just Kay and Nyx. You can't bring any of the other members of the crew with you on these missions, and I think that could have changed the game because you would have had more dialogue other than just K and Nyx. 
Um, so to me, that could have been an interesting style of gameplay, but they didn't go for it. Um, then at the end of the game, we finally get up to the heist, the thing that we've been building the entire game for. Um, it almost seems too easy of a mission. In the end, I felt like something was going to happen. Everything felt like it was going too smooth. And I honestly felt like we were going to be betrayed anyways. I knew she was going to be betrayed. Um, there's a lot of people that get stunned in this game instead of outright blasted or killed when in a true underworld crime syndicate, I do fully believe a lot more people would have been killed rather than stunned. Um, on top of that, Kay's motivation for going after Jalen after he betrayed her is not the credits or the codex that he has of Rebel Alliance and Information Network, but it's for ND5. Because Kay has had some sort of bond formed in a relationship with ND5, and the thought of her being enslaved to Jalen just irks her so much that she's willing to risk her life and her career because she could have gone free after the heist to go after ND5. Um, ND5 is still under Jalen's control, not because of the betrayal. Oh, also, I forgot her mother shows up out of nowhere, um, and she's betrayed by her mother and Jalen. Uh, she's betrayed by her mother for the second time, uh, and it makes no sense for Kay to have infiltrated the ship. Um, her, the whole point, like I said, was for her to get a death mark removed, which Slero had placed on her, but he's dead now. She could have started over, but instead of starting over, she decided to go back for ND. Um, the whole point of Kay's story was to remove the mark and live free from the Empire Syndicate slash Shadow. Uh, in the end, Kay, the Kay gives Vale, who's another random character that shows up out of nowhere. Um, she works for Slero. She's like one of his henchmen. Uh, she gives Vale the uh, the information and allows her to kind of build her own syndicate. Um, and in the end, in the galaxy, she goes off with Endy and Nyx doing God knows what. She does end up in a post credit scene helping out her mother escape from Imperial Jail, but that's it. Credits roll. Um, the main issue that I have with this is the game has a lack of identity. Perhaps the most frustrating bit is that you don't really get to know Kay. Ubisoft doesn't really give you a reason to care about this person. Another thing is that you never really feel like you're in danger. You don't feel as if you are truly on the run from these underground syndicates. There's no real sense of urgency because it's a Disney title. You know in the end Kay Vess is going to be fine and more than likely we'll see more of her in the future. To me, this is an issue, because if you have a game like 2018's God of War, as Kratos, we take on the role of the father, with, um, we take on the role of the father to Atreus. Uh, if you look at Mass Effect, like I mentioned earlier, you take on the role of a hero trying to save humanity as Commander Shepard. Um, in Star Wars Outlaws, we're a random smuggler whose story contributes nothing, as I said, that affects the bigger picture. The last part I'll say is that there are lingering questions regarding Kay's story, like what happened to her father. He is not mentioned at all whatsoever. It's not said if he's alive or if he's dead. Um, there's no mention of him at all. Maybe we'll see it in a sequel. Who knows? Maybe it'll be in the DLC. We don't know. Um, overall, in my opinion, Star Wars Outlaws lacks what it takes to create a proper, modern open world that lacks character depth and proper storytelling. So this is one of the games that I actually was looking forward to this year, and it was a massive flop. I actually enjoyed replaying through The Witcher 3, a game I had already played more than I did playing this game. Perhaps the most entertaining part about this game is the section right here, playing Sabacc. If I could sit there and play Sabacc all day in this game instead of doing the main story, I absolutely would, but I am sorry to say that if you spent $70 on this game, or more, you completely wasted your money. It was an interesting, nice little side look into what a game company can do, and I feel like they had the foundation of a really good Star Wars game, but they just didn't nail it. So that's my review of Star Wars Outlaws. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.